Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Ako po si G. Tanji, and thank you for watching once again Kababayan Today. Today's a very special episode coming to you from Manila, Philippines, as I get to speak to a lady that needs no further introduction. She epitomizes the Filipina. Ladies and gentlemen, Leia Salonga. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's get started right away. Let's start from the very beginning. Pretty you, good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> um, you started in the entertainment young, industry, yeah. very young. Let's let's talk about your childhood. How was that like growing up? Um, I grew up in an, as part of an artistic family. I had one cousin who was very active in musical theater, and it was through her that I got into the business. She heard me singing at a family party and told my mom, you might want to bring Leia to auditions for the King and I for Repertory Philippines. She was active with Rep. Um, and so my mom brought me to an audition where I sang a song from The Sound of Music and recited my Girl Scout Oath um, because they needed something that was kind of a monologue. And because I had just finished my Scout Investiture, I still had it locked in my head. Um, I got the job. I turned seven in rehearsal. So I was actually six when I got hired. And I just remember not feeling pressure, not feeling any anybody saying, you have to do good because this is life and death. It was more of, if you're enjoying yourself, keep going. And if you're not, then stop. So it was never a high pressure, intense situation, which I appreciated as a kid because I get to be a kid. And the nice thing about starting um, with that show and with rep was that I was not the only child. There were many other kids that were hired to be a part of the production. And so there was always running around before rehearsals if, any, if we got there early and a lot of adults having to tell us to be quiet. Um, but I remember always having fun being out on stage. I remember not feeling any stage fright, not feeling any fear. And because it was, when you're seven, you don't have any of those um, you don't have that, that nervousness. It's, it's just you get out there, you have makeup on your face, you're in a nice costume, you go out, you feel the lights, and that's that. Mm -hmm. Being surrounded around such talented artists growing up, how has that impacted who you are as an individual? I don't know. I mean, when we were, I mean, when you're at a family party and you, all of a sudden people are jamming and somebody's playing a guitar, that becomes your normal. It's... It's not strange when something like that happens. So I guess for anybody else that grows up in an artistic family, that becomes your norm and it's like, okay. okay. In, in the same way that if you're from a culinary family, people you know, bringing their A-games at Christmas mm -hmm. becomes then the normal. Um, so it didn't necessarily feel like, and I mean this in, an, in, a, in the greatest way possible, it didn't feel like the most spectacular or special thing because at every party that's what would happen and I think a lot of Filipino families would have the jam session or sessions around a, a microphone with a piano or karaoke or anything or, or stuff like that because it's such a musical culture um, how it shaped me I guess because that was the normal it wasn't necessarily expected of members of the family to get into the arts um, but maybe because I grew up around that it felt okay to choose to be an artist. It never felt, I, I never felt like there would be a big blowout with my parents if I had decided to take an artistic path. And also it seemed very evident from when I was very young that that was going to be the path I would eventually choose. It's, it's great that you mentioned that because a lot of Kababayans, especially the younger generation, yeah. are stuck in this sort of space where they want to pursue artistic passions and yes. yet because of their Filipino parents that expect yeah, a them lot of to Asian par a lot of Asian parents I mean it's not limited to the Filipino parents and I do understand where the parents are coming from I I have a daughter um, and you you want your child to be able to survive to be able to pay their bills pay the rent be able to take care of themselves financially mm -hmm. however there is a there are these heartstrings that are tugged 
and you, you are pulled in artistic directions. And there are many people who choose that path and are very successful at it and are all the better for it. Um, but it had, but the thing is for me, if the, a parent also needs discernment, there has to be that thing of, I can see that my child can change the world with their art. If you see that, if, if you as a parent can see that that is what is going to happen and that this person has the potential to be this, you know, this moving force in the world, then you have to because God created them that way. Um, but if it is just a, an amateurish like, mm. where it's not one of these life driving forces where it's kind of magaling, then you may steer them towards marketing, sciences, business, because maybe that's where their creative passions actually lie. But some people ha discover that. They start out as singers, and then all of a sudden they discover that their true gift is elsewhere. Mm. And so that happens. It goes backwards. Like they start off artists, and then all of a sudden they realize they have this head for business that they, oh my gosh, I have that pala. Mm -mm. And then they go into this business, and all of a sudden everything just starts happening and clicking in ways that it never did before. So there is that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's very difficult, but I think parents need to ask for, from God, they, sh they shouldn't ask for, please let my kid be a doctor. It's more of, please give me wisdom and discernment to help steer my child towards where you want them to go. Okay. Thank you so much. We've got Leah Salonga with us here on Kababayan Today. Pagbalik natin, we're going to talk to her about the many roles that she plays as a woman. We'll be right back here on Kababayan Today. Don't go away. Nagbabalik tayo dito sa Kababayan Today. Kasama pa rin natin si Lea Salonga. Let's get to talk to her about the many roles she plays as a woman. You have so many roles. Yeah, as, as a lot of women. So yeah. let's talk about the many roles that define Lea Salonga. Okay. Currently, which is why I'm in this building right now, I coach on The Voice of the Philippines. Um, it's been an incredibly fulfilling hat that I've had to wear. I've, this is not the first time coaching. I mean, I've done it before. Um, one of my good friends, Bobby Garcia, pulled me into a production of Beauty and the Beast, not to perform, but to coach. He had hired two beautiful young women to play Belle. He hired Casey Concepcion and Karel Marquez. And so Menchu Lauchenko, who was a th theater legend here in the Philippines, and I were pulled in. At first, we thought, the two of us, we carpooled on the way to rehearsal because we both live in the same area. And so what are we going to do? And so, yeah, it's probably just going to be like a, we'll just talk to them. We'll see what, what it's going to be, you know, give them advice. We thought it was going to be that simple. And then we watched a rehearsal. And then we were holding each other's hands. And we said, uh, we're going to have to come back every day. <laughs> We're, we're, we're going to have to come back tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So for about two or so weeks, all the way until opening night, we were beside Bobby so that he could focus on the rest of the show. We were, our task was only to take care of the girls, of the bells. Everybody else was a theater professional mm -hmm. and we didn't really have to take care of anybody else. So we took very, we took lots and lots and lots of notes every single day. Casey and Karel would go home every single day with at least three pages of handwritten, single-spaced notes that they would have to work on uh, specific to the scenes that they were doing. And that was my first taste of coaching. And, and I fell in love with it. And I absolutely... Men I love it. Mentoring. I mean, yeah. that's exactly what it is. It's mentoring. It is. it is, because it's not just about move three inches to the left. Please don't move when you're sitting on that bench. Mm -hmm. Don't cover this other person's face because 
it's a face. Mm -hmm. It's a tool. Do not, don't, mm -hmm. and please be more still. So, I mean, there, it's stuff like that, but it's also advice on the lifestyle you need to live when you're doing a show every single day. It's, you can't be out drinking until the wee hours of the morning. You have to go home early. You need eight hours of sleep. You need to hydrate. You need, you need sleep. You need to eat properly. You need to be strong. You need to, all of these things. And if you panic, if on stage, well, just do the best you can and try to look calm because chances are the audience will not know what's going on. And what I've discovered is that whenever somebody that I'm coaching is on stage, my stomach is so tied up in knots and it's, it's worse than if I'm actually performing. It's worse, it's far worse because I can't do anything. Should anything go wrong, wala akong magagawa except sit on my hands and pray. It's, it's all I can do. It's like, I need, to go, I need to go puke now. This is awful. It's awful. Well, it seems like you speak from a very... Uh, your, your training really comes from theater, yeah. which I have to say, I've, I've only dabbled a little bit in theater, but the discipline that you gain yeah. from that, it's, it's just, it really sets you on that yeah. professional path, right? But what about the other aspects of Leia? How about film? You've done a couple of films. I've film. done a few. I've yeah. done... I did more film as a teenager, um, and only two as an, as an adult, the two romances that I got to do with Agamulak. Um, do you miss for, it? For me, I find film more difficult because you're working in non-chronological order, mm -hmm. and I tend to be very, here's point A and here's point B, and I need to get from one point to the next in a certain order. Mm. So filming out of order is something that I find very difficult. and. So I need to, I think, train my brain and really commit to a script and whatever emotional states of being my character needs to be in just so that I can make sense of it where it's beyond just, oh yeah, I have to cry now. I need to know the whys of everything and then I'll be able to emotionally map it. And I think I need time before an actual shoot would begin to figure out the chronology of things and sometimes when we do film here in, in Manila in the Philippines sometimes you don't have a working script and sometimes you're making stuff up as you go along and you're improvising and you know your, your writer is right there on set writing dialogue and it's it's like it, it sometimes drives me nuts whereas in theater everything's laid out you've got your music you've got the books and you're done so much of the work has been taken care of already before you even start mm -hmm. that when you do show up for your table read you know what's happening and through every rehearsal day you're able to get deeper into where you need to be and you're able to map out and write down okay this is what ah this is what I need and so when you actually perform it in front of a crowd you're you feel you feel ready ready enough to be in front of a crowd but still with enough edge that there's a lot of spontaneity that still happens on stage. Um, and that's what I, I have a hard time dealing with when I do film. So it, it, film is something that I don't do often only because I'm not one of those people that I think that's made to do film, but because there seems to be a demand and a clamor to see me on film, then yeah. But I, I cannot in any way, shape or form consider myself a film actress. That would be insulting to, to people like Nora Honor and Vilma Santos <laughs> and Sharon Coneta and Charito Solis and Hilda Coronel. And yeah, all these all women. These, yeah, yeah. All these incredible women who have made it their bread and butter to appear on film and, and people who have worked with Ishmael Bernal and Dino Broca mm -hmm. and Peke Galiaga and, and all of these amazing directors. I dabble. In film, I appear once in a while, and for some strange reason, people seem to enjoy still airing these mm -hmm. movies on TV. <laughs> I'm like, why? Why are you paying money to see me ugly cry? This is, this, no, you know? So, Leia, let me ask you how has becoming a mom impacted you as an individual? Has helped your work? It has. I mean, all of a sudden, you, you discover that your heart had more levels than you thought existed. That you thought that you were at the basement of something and then all of a sudden you discover that, oh, there's a sinkhole right under the floor and boom, 
you just fall into a whole other set of emotions that you did not realize you were capable of and depth that you didn't think existed. You realize you're more capable of love and generosity and patience. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I understand that all too well. Yeah. So how would you describe Leia as a mother? I'm pretty strict. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm nice in a lot of ways to my daughter, but there has to also be discipline and there needs to be a firm hand. And both my husband and I exercise it. Mom, dad, can I have? No, you have to earn it. Mom, dad, can it? Is it? No, it's a school night. Mom, dad, can I have? Can I have my? No, it's 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 already eight thirty. You gotta go to bed. Okay. <laughs> okay. What about what about Leia as a wife? How is Leia as a wife? You'd have to ask my husband, but I think he's happy and he has no complaints. Um, no, I mean, we started out together in two thousand and one. So we've been together. It'll be fourteen years in November, and we met in Los Angeles um, while I was doing a show. And the first couple of times that I met him, it was like, no, go away, no, nah, not interested. At the third, at, on the, at the third time, it was like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll go out with you. And it was at the first date. After the first date, he took me home, and when I closed the door after he said goodbye, I was like, something special is gonna happen. When we return, kasama pa rin natin si Leia Salonga. Tatanungin naman natin siya about the Filipina. Her thoughts on this when we return on Kababayan Today. Welcome back to Kababayan Today. Kasama pa rin natin si Leia Salonga. Let's talk to her about what it means to be a Filipina of the world. Leia, as a Filipina of the world, what do you think that embodies? What does that definition mean, being a Filipina? For me, ha. Huh? Mm -hmm. And having been raised by a very strong woman, having first worked with incredibly strong women role models, and being surrounded by women that speak their minds and don't feel that they have to bow down to any authority to assert themselves. For me, it's like, to be Filipina is to be, well, beautiful, smart, kind, compassionate, sincere, loving, and loving of, not just loving of oneself or family, but loving of country, loving of work, um, loving of other people. It's all of these things. It's so multidimensional. To say you're Filipina should not just be about wearing the pretty dresses and having the pretty makeup. It's being somebody like, what is the name of that trans model, the really gorgeous one, Gina? Gina Rosero. Gina Rosero, who had, I, I'm sure, thankfully, she had so much maternal support from her mother. It's like, go and live your life. And how many people get to do that? And so she's living a dream. I mean, she's a supermodel. And I've heard her TED talk. She's extremely intelligent. And I'm like, that's Filipina, where you stand tall with your head held high, making your dreams come true, talking eloquently about the journey of your, of your life, and carving out a path for many others to follow. That's, it, that's amazing. Leia, what makes you feel empowered as a woman? Oh, I don't know. Maybe what empowers me as a woman? I think knowing that I have the support of my family, friends, that I get to do, that I'm, I feel very blessed to get to do such good work, that I get to have a lot of wonderful opportunities to do what I love to do. Um, I, think, I, I think I was just born under a very lucky star, that a lot of things are happening, and I feel incredibly fortunate that, oh, I, I like the way the way that things, these things are happening, and I love having the freedom to assert myself and to argue on TV with, with, with people that I also respect, mm -hmm. um, and getting to be strong and knowing that I can be, mm -hmm. and not be told, um, you may have to tone that down. I've not heard those words 
yet. And it's very empowering knowing that I can be me and have people appreciate that. Thank you, Leia. Pagbalik natin, kasama pa rin natin si Leia Salonga para sa buwan ng kababaihan here on Kababayan Today. We'll be right back. Kababayan today, buwan ng kababaihan. Kaya naman, kausap natin si Leia Salonga. We'll get to talk to her about what she feels are issues of women that need to be addressed today. Leia, lastly, yes. it's Women's Month. For you, what are the women's issues that you feel very passionate about? Oh boy, how long do we have? <laughs> um, no, seriously. Um, for me, I'm, I'm one of the artists in the Philippines that's very much pro-reproductive health. And it is something that I have aligned myself with for a while. And it is less about actual contraception and more about education. Because distribution of, of anything makes absolutely no sense without a good solid head behind it. So for me, it's really about maternal health. It's about knowing to space the number of children you have. It's knowing that you can and that there is help, and that you don't have to feel shackled to, to, be, you know, to the thought of having 10, 11, or 12 pregnancies. It's, I want every Filipino and Filipina to know that, yes, with proper education, with knowledge, and arming yourself, and communication with your spouse, that you can have the family size that you want, in order to raise your children in a, in a, in a fruitful and responsible way. And huh, it's a frustrating issue because there are so many walls. And it's once you realize that women's are your, women are your partners, not your servants or your slaves, not people to step on, but rather people to stand side by side with, with every issue that is you know, that troubles the world, not just anything, any particular issue, then I think this would be a better, much better world. You know, we're partners and on red carpets, don't just ask us about what we're wearing or who we're wearing, you know, but ask us about the roles that we get to play in the films we do or in the, or on stage, mm -hmm. or there were so many like memes about, well, you, you got the more, question I, I just got asked the girl question why you never get asked the girl question because you're a boy and I, I just laughed out loud and, and I went good for you for good for you Emma Stone for saying that yeah thank you Leah for your time talking to us on Kababayan you're today sincerely you are one of the women that really embodies what the Filipina should aspire to be. Thank so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much thanks, for. I'm asked to go. <laughs> thanks for watching. Come on by today. Bye bye. Mwah. Once again, this is G Tanji signing off from Manila, Philippines. <laughs>